As you can tell straight away, unless the climate's changed dramatically, I'm not in my usual location, which is um, Hampshire in the UK. Uh, beautiful palm tree there with uh, in fruit. Just have a quick scan around the lawn there. Beautiful. You can see groves of beautiful pomegranate trees all the way around here. And a little cottage. So yes, I'm not at home in Hampshire. I'm actually in Sicily. Um, so if that's not beautiful enough, we arrived here the other day and having a little walk around and I've discovered this. Follow me. It's a beautiful outside building here. Um, the biggest table, dining room table I've ever seen in my entire life. Huge. Must be about four metres, four and a half metres long and um, nice stone building. There's a well in the middle there, mm. old-fashioned um, sink, um, the obligatory barbecue of course. Curious looking steel um, tools on the wall because look what's here, would you believe it? A commercial pizza oven, the full works, the full Monty. Um, so as you can imagine, I was a bit excited about finding this here. I didn't know it was here. Um, so when in Rome or in um, Sicily, um, let's do as the Romans do. And um, I thought, well, let's make some pizzas. So I'm going to do that um, this afternoon. Um, and I thought I'd share it with you. But let's just have a quick look at this oven before we do anything. You can see there's a, a great big uh, bottom part here. I um, mean it must go back, what is it, about a metre and a half or something. Um, and this is where you light the fire. So it's a wood fired commercial pizza oven. Um, so we'll be throwing in some logs in there to get the thing up to temperature. And um, this is where the magic happens in here. So this is the oven part. So separate oven part, slightly different but obviously the same principle to a clay oven. Um, various trays, um, a nice um, stone floor and um, a thermometer to boot. So um, we're going to fire it up and see how we get on and um, so let's make pizzas. Okay so let's make some pizzas. So I've got everything um, I need here for making the pizza dough. Uh, we've got olive oil, we have um, pizza flour, this is actually Italian um, double zero pizza flour um, you can use, and I normally use actually when I'm home, I use a mixture of plain flour and um, strong bread flour, uh, a mixture of half and half. Uh, but this is the real deal, so uh, again, because we're here in Italy, we've got to use the real stuff. So that's the flour, uh, we've got a little packet of yeast, um, some salt and a jug of room temperature water. And we've also got a little um, skanky cat. Um, I think he's going to say hello. The cat's optional, of course. Um, and would you believe it started raining? Um, so it's been boiling, blistering hot here since we've been here. It's been 33, 34, 35 degrees centigrade, and it's just started raining. Actually, it's a welcome break from the heat, so and perfect for um, cooking. So let's crack on. So um, this is really simple. I've got a mixing bowl. I'm going to use 500 grams um, or so, and I don't have any scales, so this is a kilo bag of flour. So I'm going to use half, about half a bag of flour, um, a bit more. That's about half, I think. Maybe a little bit more. So, 500 grams of flour. Again, if you were doing this, if I was doing this at home, I would do 250 grams of um, each types of flour, as I mentioned earlier. And then I'm just going to pour in um, this packet of um, yeast. It's a 7 gram packet of yeast, so that should be just spot on. I'm not mixing it with water, I'm just going to mix all the dry ingredients together to start with. Um, some salt, a pinch or so, let's have a look at about that much salt. It's probably about 5 grams normally I would use something like that of salt. Um, and now I'm going to pour in some water. Um, let's have a look. Now, now pizza dough tends to be stickier than bread dough. Um, so let's just put, put some water in, let's mix it up now. You could use a spoon to do this if you wanted to, but I'm just going to get in there. If you put too much water in, you can always add a little bit extra flour. 
that's fine. So we're going to mix all that together. Okay. Squidge it in. You're going to get messy. Um, this isn't very easy filming with one hand and trying to cook with the other. Um, as you can imagine, my camera's going to get covered in flour, but um, I'm doing my best. Um, so actually, you know, that's not looking too bad. It was a pretty good guess, I think, in terms of water. So um, it's sort of quite sticky. The next thing I want to do, if I can get this off my hands, if I can get this off my hands, is to put a glug of olive oil in. So with horrible, skanky, doughy fingers, I'm going to put a glug of olive oil. Okay, there's glug. Ready? Glug, 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 glug. Okay, perfect. Right, um, and now mix it in. So I'll just mix all that together and then we'll come back and knead. Okay, so <clears throat> I've managed to balance the camera on a bag of flour, so that's cool. Um, the next stage is to knead the dough, so um, hopefully um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Here you go, here's the, the dough that we just mixed up in the bowl. Um, I've floured the surface that I'm going to be kneading on, and it's fairly straightforward. Let's just um, use this technique. So hold it, hold the back of the dough with one hand and push and bring it back with the other. So push and bring it back with the other. Push, bring it back, push. Bring it back like so. Twist it around and keep turning and keep doing it. Right, so how long are you going to do this for? Um, probably about 20 minutes at least, I would think, because um, you want to um, get a nice sort of bread doughy texture to it. Um, it's not as important as when you are making bread that you sort of knead it for such a, um, a long period of time. Uh, the pizzas, pizza dough is a little bit more forgiving than that um, but you do want to get that nice sort of springiness to it that you would get in a bread dough um, so um, just keep uh, kneading away like so um, it's quite easy, it's quite good fun um, get the kids to do it, they love it um, at home of course I'm spoiled so I just normally stick this into my mixer with the dough hook and leave it for a quarter of an hour or so and it would do its own thing and then I'd come back and magic by magic it would all be done but we don't have one of these here and I guess I'd probably be chased out of Italy as well if I used a, um, a machine to, to knead pizza dough so um, let's do it in the traditional way as we're here in Italy and um, get on with it uh, we'll come back. I'll come back to you once this stage is complete and show you what the finished dough should look like Okay, so that's 15 minutes, um, honestly that really is 15 minutes, and I think that's absolutely plenty. Um, now it is very warm out here, as I said to you before, so that might affect the length of time that you need to knead the dough for, but remember this isn't bread dough, so you don't really need to um, knead it to the extent. Um, normally when you, when you uh, make bread, the test is that you can pull out um, a very thin um, window of dough, something like that, but you can see that this is still tearing, so um, what I'm going to do is leave it at that, I'm just going to form it into a ball and um, form it into a ball and then I'm going to pop it into back into the plastic bowl um, with a little bit of olive oil So, oil just to stop it sticking, and then I'm going to whack it in the bowl, and we're going to leave it in there for about an hour to prove. Um, I'm going to cover it with some cling film, um, so in about an hour or so, it will double in size. Um, and once we've got to that stage, um, I'll come back and we can have a look at what to do next. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to gather some wood and get the fire ready. Okay, so we are still waiting for the dough to prove. So while that's doing, um, in the meantime, I've prepared a, a tomato sauce topping, um, which you can find the ingredients, the recipe, and the method for on the blog. 
Um, but so there are a the couple of things you can do while you're waiting, obviously. But the other thing that I've been doing and getting ready are some bits of wood uh, ready to light the fire. And obviously, it takes a while to get these ovens up to temperature. I haven't got a clue how long this one's going to take, but I'm imagining to get it up to around 250 or so, it will probably take about an hour. It's a guess. So let's see how good my guess is in a little while. But obviously, we need something to burn. So we have some bits of cardboard. Um, some paper, um, some bits of kindling, dry kindling that I've collected from around the garden and some um, some twigs and some sticks that uh, we're going to use to light the fire. Um, I've got loads of logs, luckily, um, already prepared. I don't have to do any of that chopping, which is great. So um, let's get on with lighting the fire. Okay, so I'm about to light the oven. I've um, piled up uh, in the usual way that I do this, I've put some paper in the middle and just piled sort of kindling and um, sort of sticks around the outside. Um, I've cheated a little bit because I've put a little bit of um, barbecue lighter fuel on it, so this is probably going to go up with a woomph. Um, so let's have a go and see what happens. There she goes. I think that's uh, fairly comprehensively burning. Um, so the next stage really is to just keep adding wood to it um, until we get a nice um, roaring fire. Okay. It's been, the fire's been burning for about just over half an hour, about 35 minutes now, and the temperature gauge tells me, you kind of probably can't read it, but it tells me that we're about up to about 150. So it's just degrees centigrade by the way, so let's just have a look at what's going on in there. Um, and that looks really good to me, that's burning really well, you can really feel the the heat from here, so that's splendid. So um, obviously we need to keep going, I want to be up to at least 220, 230, something like that. 250 would be great. Let's see what we can do. We're ready, we're on. Okay, so the oven, it's been about an hour and a quarter and the oven is about 250, so I think that's probably just about right. That will do for tonight because we're starving, we can't make any longer. So let's have a look at this dough. This should have doubled in size and you can already see that it's turned into a great big giant uh, Blumongi blob, which is great. Um, so let's just get the oil up to the rear, and then have a look at that. You can see that's just how it needs to be, look all nice and puffy. So you can sort of knock that back down, and we're going to tip that out onto the table, but we're going to flour um, the surface first. Um, I'm not tipping it all out, I'm just going to take a chunk that I'm then going to roll out into sort of pizza shape. So, well floured um, surface, we don't want it sticking. So I'm just going to take a piece of the dough, um, sort of so big, slightly bigger than a golf ball size, um, and I prefer them um, to make these pizzas sort of quite thin, um, so you get a nice crispy base, uh, but also you don't want to make them too big, um, because they're more difficult to get in and out of the oven. And the peel that we've got here actually is only a sort of certain size. So take all those factors into consideration, obviously. So um, make it into a nice ball shape, roll it in a bit of flour, um, and then sort of press it down. So you're making a little disc. Now I've never ever managed to make a perfectly round pizza yet, but who cares, it doesn't matter. They always taste great. So um, as they come, if you like squares, you can make them square. Uh, mine always end up looking like um, sort of maps of various sort of countries of the world. So um, um, here goes. So I've got this cool, cute little rolling pin um, I found here. Um, obviously a, a traditional pizza rolling pin. Um, and we're just going to roll these this baby out. Twiddling it round. Make sure it's not sticking, and it's not. This is really good dough. And Keep going like so. Actually, this is probably the roundest pizza I've ever made in my life, which is a miracle. Um, and I 
reckon sort of about three mil, something like that, three millimeters thick, something like that is about right. Um, if you like thick, deep pan pizzas, then you can obviously um, make them as thick as you like. Okay, so I reckon that's about right. Bit of a teardrop shape, but there you go. Okay, so now it's time for the toppings. So before you put the toppings on, I recommend you get some flour underneath because the toppings obviously weigh it down and they sometimes get a little bit saturated and the dangerous part is trying to get them off the table onto the peel. Um, so you don't want them to stick. So that's about right. Now, I'm going to take the camera and um, my glamorous assistant is going to talk us through toppings, the yummy toppings that we've got here. So, what have we got here, Claire? Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, we've got here um, some grated mozzarella. Yum. It's really nice and fresh. Good -o. And a simple tomato sauce, just like you'd make for a pasta sauce, yeah. but a little bit thicker. Recipes on the blog. And that's made with tomato and passata. Super. And tomato puree. And what's herbs. that there in that bowl? In here, there's um, some garlic, oil, and rosemary. So, Yum. crushed up, chopped up garlic, olive oil, and rosemary. Okay. And you can use that as an alternative topping yeah. if you don't want. Um, if you don't want tomato, you can use that, and I do recommend that you try it because it's absolutely delicious. Okay. And so all the, the other yummy toppings over here, here on this plate. Some chopped up cherry tomatoes, that's because Yours. all we had. Yum. Um, there's some sliced salami, mm -hmm. some artichoke hearts, mm. some really good black olives there. There's some fresh torn basil leaves. Mm -hmm. um, also, I like these. These mm -hmm. are pine nuts. Yum. Um, and I also make a pizza with some sultanas on. Yeah. That's what I like. Not everybody's cover tea, but it is quite nice, worth a try. And also some Last but not least. really love an anchovies, some lovely anchovies and there. They're great, anchovies are great. You get a little explosion of sort of salty yumminess on the pizza if you have anchovies. So, um, right Claire, if you can um, make it top the pizza then. Okay. And then um, and we'll try and get one in the oven. Right, so. The to the bishop. On my pizza. I'm just going to have a bit of this oil. Again, you don't want to saturate it because otherwise they go really soggy. So that's a nice garlicky, oily base. Expertly done. Okay. Take it a bit. I don't take it right to the edge because it tends to fall off every time. Yep. And what are you going to have on it? Um, I'm going to have some. Mozzarella. Actually, I'm going to put that on last, I think. Um, I'm going to have some lovely black olives here. Mm -hmm. Tear those up a little bit. I'm also going to have some of these artichoke halves. Hearts, rather. Mm -hmm. And maybe some a few of these pine nuts mm -hmm. scattered over. These mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anchovies? Yeah, just these are very strong, so you yeah, don't want too many. too many of these. I'll just yeah, make about three, I think. Three or four. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to make a good quarters of my pizza with mm -hmm. those. Smells delicious already. And just take a little bit, well, as much cheese as you like, but you don't want to completely overload yeah. it. This is a We've lovely... learnt that if you put too much on them, it, it's either impossible to get them off the table onto the peel or it all shoots off when you put them into the oven. So try not to overdo it, even though it's very tempting okay, to do got it. Okay, good. And then. Um, Anything else? Oh, a bit of basil. Bits of basil <clears throat> leaves there. Lovely. Looks great. Okay, so the next stage is obviously to try and get it onto the peel and into the oven. So we'll do that next. Okay. Okay, so um, it's time to get this pizza in the oven. Um, so what I'm going to do is a little bit of flour on the, this metal peel. Um, just to help it come off when we put it in the oven. And then the technique um, 
which sometimes work and sometimes doesn't. So grab the bit of pizza and push it underneath and slide it on the peel just the like of that. There you go, that was fairly successful. Keep it moving, there you go, that's fine. Right, so over to the oven. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So it's now, I can see it's just almost 300 degrees centigrade. And um, that is very hot. Um, okay. And so we're going to slide it onto one of these metal trays that are in here. These are in here just to, just so that the bottom of their oven doesn't get all cheesy and sticky. So let's just slip it onto that metal tray, like so. And just film in there, Claire, and get a shot of that. Feel the heat. Okay, brilliant. Right, so we'll shut the door, leave it for a few minutes, and come back into it. Right, okay, so that's been in for just under five minutes, and let's have a look. Claire, do you want to have a look in there? Okay, so we're going to slip the pan on the pizza, lift it out. What does it look like? It looks great. It's really Beautiful. nice and brown. Right, shut the door so we can keep the heat in. Wrap yeah. it right in the Take that over to the chopping board. Okay. There we go. One super duper Sicilian style pizza, um, ready to be chopped. Which mm. we'll do crispy, crunchy base, which is how we love them. And there you go. So that's um, how to make a pizza from scratch in a traditional Sicilian commercial wood-fired pizza oven.